All right, it's time for another edition of Weird Wednesday. I'm Justin. I'm Jesse. And you just love this this music beat that we play each podcast so much, it's don't you? It's good. It does got a good vibe to it. Makes me want to boogie. Well, you you were boogie. <laughs> So we are the Podcasting Dead. We podcast about a lot of different things, and and weird things are one of those things that we podcast. Um, And it won't always be paranormal. Sometimes we might talk about, like, murder stuff, or we might talk about real-life disappearances or something. But, you know, just anything weird. If anybody has a subject that you want uh, discussed, let us know so we can have time to research it. We really want to do the Missing 411, but there's so much. I've got two books. I meant to take one with me. There's so much to missing 411. I mean, what we really need to do is 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 find some of the eeriest <laughs> stories and compare them. Yeah. But so that that will come at a later date for sure. Um, and for Walking Dead fans, just to let you know, because we had one person comment and was a little upset because they thought we were not doing Walking Dead anymore. <laughs> we are doing Walking Dead. This is just extra content. So if you know us from that, don't worry. Walking Dead content's still there. Actually, uh podcasted about it on monday i think but today we're talking about one of my favorites so the 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 simulation theory (laughs) had a lull there simulation theory and extraterrestrials Uh, are probably my favorite uh like paranormal or weird subject so i'm excited since today we're talking about real life extraterrestrial encounters (laughs) from reddit i thought that you were gonna say we were talking about simulation theory and i'm like you switched it up on me justin you surprised it's a glitch in the matrix (laughs) that's like that's not what you said a minute ago that's a glitch in the matrix is all that is (laughs) simulation theory proven But no, so we're going to talk about real life uh, reportedly true encounters with ex- extraterrestrials. Now, I'm not going to say I don't believe in ghosts. I'm, I'm, I'm open minded to it, but I do think a lot of ghost stories are misidentification and overactive imaginations. We did evolve, right, to <laughs> to always be on guard. And when we're yes. in a house that's it's quiet and alone, whether we mean to or not, our inherited evolutionary instincts tell us to be on guard. Yep. So every bump, every sound could be something because our ancestors used to get chased around and eaten by a lot of things this is true like so, dinosaurs yeah so i think that <laughs> a lot of times ghosts encounters are just uh, misidentified things but extraterrestrials is something i definitely think are out there because it's 100%. just percent the universe is entirely too big for there yep. not to exist agreed life. i don't understand people that don't think aliens exist because what 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 like, are you thinking? Like, do you know how big the universe is? It's too big to comprehend. And it's expanding. We're literally a sp- not even a speck. We're not. We're like below. You wouldn't even be able to see us if you get far enough. We're, I mean, the we're Earth. like dust's dust. Right. Like, we're the we're dust just, that little, dust cleans out dust of their humans. apartment. Yeah, yeah, dust like, Earth. We're teeny. So, and it's like, uh, you know, uh, now whether or not extraterrestrials have visited us, I don't know, but I do love to read about it. But I totally think that there are extraterrestrials out there that I just, I don't think that, uh, if if so, well, who was it? I can't remember who said it, but one quote that I like was somebody was like, there only exists two possibilities, either <laughs> extraterrestrials exist or we're alone in the universe. Both are <laughs> equally terrifying. <laughs> yeah, I've never heard that, but that, I don't think... I think us being alone in the universe is more scary than extraterrestrials, but I'm not scared of aliens, so I guess that makes sense. Well, it's because you've never had a real encounter. You don't know that. Have We're you? We're probably all actually aliens in skin suits. I mean, that is some theories that suggest that our evolution was, was sped up by alien DNA. Well, remember, <laughs> I thought I was reptilian for a few minutes. Uh, Jesse sent me this like hour-long <laughs> Snapchat explaining why she thought she may be reptilian. And then by the end of the snap, had had convinced herself she was not reptilian. Because I, I didn't really think about it before I started talking in the Snapchat. Because you were going, and then by the end of it, before I could even respond to say, I don't think you're reptilian, you were like, you know what, maybe I'm not reptilian. <laughs> Like just let her, just let her go. She'll figure it out. <laughs> Some of the stuff was lining up, but then it didn't. <laughs> just let her do her thing, and she will figure it out. <laughs> But no, so we're going to uh, read some supposed real-life encounters with extraterrestrials. These are, I'm, I'm, I'm reading these from the site TravelChannel.com, um, and these are stories from Reddit. I would love to give credit to the Redditors who, okay, no, there there are, okay, there are 
uh, names at the bottom of these. So let's start out with this one. This is called The Encounter Abroad. Mm. So this is a family story I've heard only twice. I can't remember how it was brought up the first time, but the explanation was very vague. So I asked again a few months later when the family had come together at the cottage during summer, and they seemed kind of iffy talking about it, but uh, provided more details. Uh, They lived in Ukraine, but took a trip to Turkey sometime in the 90s. They had rented a little cottage there uh, that was far enough into the countryside to be considered fairly remote. Long story short, one evening, the dogs outside started going absolutely crazy, barking viciously and just overall behaving erratically. One of them, my grandma's brother, I believe, went outside to check what was going on and saw what they can only describe as a UFO nearing their cottage pretty high up in the sky, but lowering a bit as it came closer. He called for the rest of the family to come see, and to this day, they can still confirm what they saw. Well, the old, the ones that are still alive, at least. They said it was a triangle-shaped uh, craft and had three lights, one in each corner. When it got seriously close to the house, uh, they really began to panic and ran back inside. The very walls were shaking. Dishes were breaking from the uh, force of the vibrations going throughout the walls and floor, and the dogs outside were barking louder than ever. It it hovered over the cottage for several minutes before ascending back up and disappearing. These are all people who are very conservative and rational, and they hate discussions regarding the supernatural. So I have no doubt in my mind that they were telling the truth. That's how you know it's true. That's from Judith Grimes, which kind of comes full circle. Judith Grimes is Rick Grimes' daughter on The Walking Dead. Is it? Yeah. Is it the same person? No. No, no, no. no. (laughs) That's a fictional character. I wonder if that's just like a um, pseudonym? What is it called? What is it called when you make up a name for yourself? A pseudonym? A pseudonym? I don't know. I did a made-up name. It's definitely got a word. Like when writers have a different That's name. a pen name. No, there's an... Anyway, let's move I know exactly. It's like right there. It's in my brain. <laughs> and it's not coming out. But I know exactly what you're talking about. Okay. Um, well, as long well, as I mean, you- well, they really do have a bunch of different ones. You have like stage names. You have uh, pen names. You have... Um, yeah, it's, but I, I know what you mean. Okay. I think it's just somebody who really likes The Walking Dead. And oh, took, yeah, took maybe. Judith Grimes' name. Or wouldn't it be cool if that was her real name, though? It would Could be. Could be. Do you know anybody with the last name Grimes? Grimes, no. That's Unfortunately cool, That's a cool not. last name. It is. Well, it's just like there's a character on The Walking Dead named Negan. That's a cool name, too. That is a rad name. I remember, You know, like, I, I have this theory that people who write movies and books and things, they name their characters things that they would want to name their kids, but they have, like, too many names to have that many kids. I feel like, you know, as as an amateur writer, I'm always trying to come up with a name that hadn't been done or, like, yeah. invent a name. It's hard. It's very hard. It's like trying to see colors that It's like trying to invent see. a new color. You right. discover it's, a new color. You impossible. can't do that. Like, yeah, you, you, you cannot do that. But, yeah, that one's interesting. It's always interesting when someone, you know, but I... I feel like sometimes they throw that whole, oh, they don't believe in the paranormal. You know, whenever Just somebody tells you a ghost real. story, they want to make it authentic by being like, well, my grandma told well, me, but she don't even believe in ghosts, but she you, saw a ghost. <laughs> you did that about your dad, though. So were you playing? What are you talking about? Remember, because your dad don't believe in that stuff. Or maybe no, no, he legit. Said he was- no, you no, 100%. My dad is not one. I'm not gonna say he doesn't believe in ghosts. I mean, he's okay. you know he's but he's like he believes in like he's I guess his he's that doesn't really go to church a lot. But I guess if he had a religion, it would be Christianity. Okay. But you know he believes in like heaven and the afterlife and everything. But like he's not very big on ghosts. He okay. thinks a lot of times when people say, "Oh, it's a ghost," it's like mm, he's like me. He's you but, know but that's he, where he saw a ghost man in the back did. of the car. He did, and he also saw a black shape trying to grab him in his sleep. But he still just doesn't believe in ghosts. Did you, like talking about. Okay, but like, what was his theory on why he saw that if he doesn't believe it was a ghost? Sleep deprivation. Oh, uh, could have been sleep paralysis too. Yeah, I mean, he doesn't straight up say it's a ghost. He's just had some some weird encounters. He, but he won't tell you ghosts don't exist. He just thinks a lot of times when people are like, oh, uh, yeah. it's, you know, it, it's it's. But I, you know, but I don't know. I mean, that's that's a pretty simple one. But it is interesting. Like a like UFOs have these different shapes. 
Like, you yeah. know, you got like the rounded saucer shaped ones. And then triangles are a big theme too, though. A lot of and them And like triangles. long skinny ones. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite. <laughs> It's all. It ain't about the length. It's about the girth. I was gonna say it's all about the motion in the ocean, (laughs) and the girth. And the girth. Um, Have you ever seen a UFO? I thought she better say, "Have you ever seen a penis?" (laughs) (laughs) You know that I've had two times in my life where I I feel like I saw something (laughs) that was not a penis. (laughs) Was it in someone's pants? The UFO was in their pants. <laughs> All right, so tell so us. So a mutual friend of ours and I, now, yes, in this one story, we were very intoxicated. So I will pre- I will preface, uh, you know, preface it with that. We were very intoxicated, okay. but I remember this vividly. But, like, we had been drinking all night, and my parents were out of town. And oh, so, so this was, like, back in the day. Really? No. We were, like, oh. mid-20s. So when my parents would go out of town, they would ask me to, like, crash at their house just to oh, watch the house. I got you. And I would always, you know, I wouldn't have parties, but I would have, like, a couple friends over. We'd just have some beers. It was, like, in my mid-20s. So we were at the age where we wanted to drink, but we didn't want to have a crowd. I got you. I had, like, three or four people over, and they had left, and it was down to just me and this guy, and we were drinking. We're hammered. And I remember at one point we had, like, just, like, climbed up on the trampoline, and he's, like, over on one side of it, just laid out, staring up at the sky, and I was doing the same thing. And then we saw this, this bright light. I mean, no, 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 I can't describe any characteristics of it, but I saw this bright light in the sky yeah. and like it started moving and then Back it would get, forth. it would get closer to us. Like, no, we saw it grow. Like it grew what? bigger just, but it was just a big bright light, but it like the, it's movement suggested to us. Like we had gotten to the point where we noticed it and we both had sat up and I mean, we were talking about it as it was happening. It was like, what is that? And I remember like him or I, one of us said like, I thought it was a plane at first, but. It's getting closer to us, and now now it's going away. And then it was just, it's like it was observing us, yeah. even though I'm sure as high as it was, it probably wasn't observing us well, specifically. They but. probably have like super crazy telescopes, so they could have been. Could have been, but so that was pretty weird. And then eventually, it just flew off. Well, but it certainly whatever I whatever we saw, whether it was because I also think UFOs like ghosts get misidentified because I think the governments. All governments have crazy stuff. I mean, like Area 51. I don't even necessarily know that I believe there are extraterrestrials there so much as when it comes to war and and national security, you don't want other countries that you may one day end up at war against to know all of your baddest ass weapons. So if you've got aircraft that can do like cool stuff, you don't want people to know about it. So I totally get that. But either way, it was not a plane. It was not some kind of insect. There was some kind of aircraft emitting a very bright light, almost as bright as stars, that was moving in very erratic directions. The only thing it could have been was a UFO. I saw one that did that once. Well, anything in the air that you can't identify is is a a UFO. UFO. That's true. Unidentified flying object. That's true. Well, I think it was an alien spacecraft. There we go. I definitely, I, I always love the theory, though, that extraterrestrials are just us from the future. We we mildly touched on that. On Honestly, I think, back, I think you're right. Like I really us from think... the future going back to observe points in time. Like, because we always ponder, what did the ancient Egyptians actually sound like? And yeah, we've got like the Rosetta, whatever, whatever it was. What did they, they sound like? Oh, the Egyptian like language. language. Like, well, we know like how words like like how do they pronounce it what would it sound like when they oh, were their speaking? accent it's very nasally and it's really it's actually a really pretty language i think it's very interesting i don't language. think i've ever heard it but we can never know because we've never heard anybody speak it that's true you know so like and we don't know what dinosaurs sounded like they could have they could have sounded like well the t-rex has feathers then it doesn't have feathers right. and it, so i mean like it makes sense that in the future with the technology to go back in time we'd be like let's just go back and confirm <laughs> history right let's go check it out yeah i mean i think that's pretty logical for real but that was it and then i did have an experience one night i actually put it on facebook i was writing back when i lived at my apartment yeah the one you visited tons of times i love that place man i miss that place i know i still look over there and reminisce every time i go to danville so much fun in such a little space it really was it's such a cool little apartment but um like i was leaving there to come to our town one friday night and i just saw a bunch of lights 
traveling together. And I remember thinking at first, trying to be logical. I was like, okay, it could be like those balloon, not balloons, but you know, those like, um, sometimes they release them in memory of people. Oh, you know what yeah. I'm talking about? The lanterns. Yeah. So I was like, okay, it could be that. But they know, like they were moving together, like mm-hmm. in a direction with purpose. And I'm talking, it was over a hundred of these lights. Could I, it have been that satellite chain that no. people see? The, I mean, there had to be hundreds of these. That's wild. Hundreds. I want to see that. And it was very, I mean, it looked just like either a bunch of very small crafts or one very, very big ass with craft a whole with bunch a ton of, of lights. Yeah. And if it wasn't hundreds of lights, it was definitely like it was above 50. I mean, if I would have stopped, <laughs> pulled over, and counted, if it would have been. If it wasn't over 100, 50. it was half of that. <laughs> right. But it, so, you know, it was so, and I remember I posted on Facebook about it, and there were other people like, yeah, what the hell is it? I see it too. And Oh, you didn't put, did you take a picture? Or video? Mm, I don't know if I took pictures of video because this was probably back in 2013, oh. 2014. Well, like every time I think I see a UFO, I try to video it and the video is blurry. Every time. It's the daily and scramble technology. I think so. What about you? Have you ever seen a UFO? I do believe I have. Um, one time I was living in Richmond and I was like nine months pregnant. This happened like a week before I had my first kid. I was at a party, and since I was nine months pregnant, I was sober as all get out. Sober AF. Yeah. <laughs> and I walked out on the back porch, and it was like a couple people out there. And I was looking in the sky, and I seen this red light, and it was doing the same thing you said yours was doing. It was like going back and forth, back and forth, zigzagging, right? So I'm watching it, and I'm asking these other people, like, do y'all see that? And they saw it, too. And so we're just looking at it, go back and forth, back and forth, and then it disappeared. But I'm still looking at the sky because I want to see it. And then, like, a minute later, it came back, and it started doing it again, and then it disappeared again. Yeah, definitely. <clears throat> I, I did, Whether it's time travelers, advanced government technology. I mean, you saw where the government – I mean, you, you've seen the declassified Navy videos, right? Uh, Tom DeLong maybe? from Blink-182. Yes. Helped get those released because yeah. he's a big okay, – you know, yeah. I mean, they had a song called Alien – What was it My Alien Girlfriend or – Aliens exist. They had some. I don't remember. He's big into extraterrestrials and like is a part of a, a a group of people that you know like try to get the truth out there. Um, but <laughs> so you like that drink? It's uh getting me there. Well, I'm getting ready to get a beer because I drank the last of my whiskey. This got me feeling fuzzy. Got you feeling fuzzy. And that's like I'm not even done with the one. Well, it's got Jack Daniels on the name. It's four point four point eight. A, B, A, what is it? 4.8% alcohol A, B, B, A, A, B. Was it true? So, all right, we're going to get back to extraterrestrials, oh, yeah, I promise. Yeah, but sorry. let me tell you a real real quick side. If you if you tune into this and you don't like to laugh, then you probably like, I hate this podcast. But if you want a quick laugh. So we've got, in our friend group, we've got this this good friend. We've been friends with her for a very long time. Well, she started dating this guy, and, and he's a cool guy, but he's very country. Like, he's one of those that when you talk about alcohol, if it ain't moonshine, he don't want oh, it. Okay. Yeah, super country. Okay. Wants everything in camouflage, um, which it's terrible why would you want a camouflaged cup because then you go in the woods and you drop your cup and now you can't find it that's true but uh so he's super country and uh, i say this as a country bumpkin myself (laughs) (laughs) i mean i spend all of my free time in the woods but this guy is super country he's he lives it well so he started giving one of our friends matt a hard time um because matt drinks pretty much white claws and as this guy calls them bitch beers yep so, you know, I mean, I pass, I guess, the manly t- I drink whiskey and beer, so I he had nothing to say about my drink selection. Okay. But with Matt, oh, Matt, oh, he zeroed in. He, like, was, was in on Matt. Like, Dang. oh, you're drinking in bitch beers. So just kept going. So what Matt started doing, and this was so with those drinks. So those, what Jesse's drinking is like a Jack Daniels pink lemonade, something like that. Yeah. It's one of those, like, uh, malt liquor drinks. But so what Matt started doing to mess with him was Matt was like, all right, I'm going I'm to start doing this and don't acknowledge it. I want him to notice it. So Matt started taking that and he would pour it into a shot glass while we were all like sitting around the table drinking. What? And he would take a shot and he would go, <clears throat> and he'd pat his chest like it was really strong. <laughs> and he did it like three or four times where Matt finally went, are you taking shots of that bitch beer? <laughs> That's funny. And Matt was like, 
It says Jack Daniels. That's why I told you yeah. earlier. I said it says that because that's this what Ma- Jack Daniels. Matt goes. This mean? is Jack Daniels. This is some strong stuff. He goes. It's pink lemonade. <laughs> it's literally like pink. That's so funny. But anyways, back to aliens. Okay. Sorry for the little uh, divergent there. <laughs> But anyways, getting back to the extraterrestrials at hand. So this one, <laughs> this one's called When Aliens Crash the Sleepover. Oh. I've never had a sleepover crashed by aliens. I, I feel Neither like I'm missing I, out. Right? Like we were gypped. Like, so when I was, is this, so this is, uh, try to give the name up front. This is from Insomnia Acrobat. Nice. It's pretty, pretty wicked name there. Yeah, pretty straightforward. So when I was about 12, my best friends and I used to sleep out on my friend's trampoline in his yard in the summer. That sounds like the most fun ever. And you just had a story on a trampoline. And I swear on everything I love, Jesse, until we pressed play, we didn't quite know what we were going to talk about. (laughs) Because we actually were going to try to find, like, I was going to find, like, a weird disappearing story. So... That's not premeditated. I have not read that before. That's wild. So did I what, what? did I not tell you ahead that we might not be able to do aliens because yeah. I was having trouble finding lists of I like. I literally had my headphones on and he was like, we might not be able to do this. So, so. I did not. So that's wild. That's some full circle stuff right there. Um, but anyways, um, so we would uh, sleep out on my friend's trampoline in his yard in the summer. We would gather our bed stuff and bounce around till we got tired and eventually lay down and go to sleep. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. That, I want to do that. I never got a sleepover like that. One evening, four of us were laying on the trampoline and talking when we noticed that there was something floating over the woods nearby. Yeah. You couldn't see it directly, just that it blocked the stars out as it slowly moved. Ooh. It was just a little higher than the tree tail tip tops and completely (laughs) silent uh we were just some dumb kids so we just watched it slowly it drifted until it was directly over top of us then suddenly there was this light that i cannot describe it was more than blinding bright it was disorientingly crippling bright Mm -hmm. like it shone down into you the next thing i remember we were all standing inside my friend's house looking out his sliding glass back door at the object still hovering there, and then it glided away. We were all spooked, but we decided to go back out to go to bed on the trampoline. We're laying there for a while, and the next thing we know, it comes back again and does the exact same thing. Again, we find ourselves inside looking out the back door. All it was was the aliens were like, yo, y'all are little kids. You need to be in the house. I don't right? know why they're talking like maybe, a Mario. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want the pizza? <laughs> Do you want the breadsticks? Uh, but we'll beam them down. Squirt. It definitely sounds like the aliens were like, humans aren't, sp- human children shouldn't be outside at this hour. <laughs> what is this new bed contraption outside? Back in the house for you. Uh, beyond all reason, we go back outside to bed again. Same thing happens again. We finally decide to sleep inside with the lights on. They were asking to get abducted. My friends and I lost touch as we grew up, but when I was 18, I heard one of them was in town. I ran into him at a party one night and pulled him to the side to ask him about that night as it bothered me for some time. His response has shaken me to this day. I cannot describe his reaction sufficiently. He looked at the ground and said, I don't want to talk about it. What? I was kind of shocked by his response, so I didn't know what to say. What the heck? He got up and walked out, and I stayed sitting there thinking about what just happened. I got up after a minute to go see if I could find him, but he left immediately after. That was it. Haven't seen him or the other since. But his response was enough to let me know that something strange definitely went down that night, and I don't know if I want to remember. Um, So that certainly sounds like his friend, while all he remembers is being teleported inside, it sounds like his friend remembers a little bit more to that wait they were teleported inside i thought that he was saying no but you know they were outside then all of a sudden they were inside missing time but i'm just using teleport oh from outside to inside oh yeah yeah but like so all this guy remembers is like we're outside we see this thing and then we're inside okay i think his friend remembers a little bit more or he like went under hypnosis and recovered lost memories do you remember that uh movie with mila jovich I don't like, know who that is. But. It was it was supposed to be based on real events, but it was an extraterrestrial 
thing, and it was like the owl. They kept seeing the owl. No, was it? Was that the that one with the owl? Yeah, he kept. I don't know. He goes to like a, uh, a hypnotist to like figure out what's you know whatever, and he keeps seeing an owl. But then you learn like it wasn't an owl; it was an extraterrestrial. Oh no, I don't know. Like he would see like an owl sitting on his like next to his bed, and then it ended up being like no, it wasn't an no, owl. No, I don't think I saw that. Yeah, it was really good. Uh, well, I thought it was really good. It gets it gets kind of crapped on now, but I went to the theaters and saw it, and I really enjoyed it. I usually like the movies that other people don't like, so I'll check it out. Me too. I feel like some people are just so, like, they want to, they want to be hard to please when it comes yeah. to movies. And I'm like, you know, here's how Jeez. I here's how I will judge a movie is how do I feel when I leave it. Like, if I'm in the theater and I get up and walk out, how do I feel as the credits roll? Yeah. I mean, I might can look back and go, yeah, you know, this was a little cheesy or this, the acting wasn't the best. But, you know, the thing is, is like, how did I feel when I left? If I felt like my money was well spent and I was like, man, that's a good movie. <laughs> then I'm going to say, go see it. I enjoyed yeah. it. Some people are just so determined to be like, I didn't like the lighting and the scenes and the camera angles. I could have done so much better than Steven Spielberg. <laughs> I remember, I, I love the show Lost, right? Like, it's my favorite show ever. I've never watched that. You should. It's not scary. It's not like Haunting on Hill House. Like, I, I thought it was a reality show for the longest time. No. I love Lost. And yes, Lost has a lot of inconsistencies and a lot of plot holes and things like that. But it's just a great show, in my opinion. But I remember I was we were having dinner at, at this Mexican restaurant here in town, and we were with some friends from Buffalo, New York, and they brought some of their friends down, and they were talking mm. about shows and stuff. And and one of them brought up like, you know, which show you like? And I was like, I love Lost. And he goes, Oh my god, <laughs> that show is written so. I'm in film school, and that show is written <laughs> so terribly. And I'm like, okay, that's good for you. You're a student in film school. Right. You're probably going to work in a diner the rest of your life, <laughs> and you're judging work that is actually raking in millions right. of dollars. Like Exactly. I bet you sniff your own farts oh, as well. I do that. Just kidding. With a glass, though? A glass? Remember on South Park? The I just... <sighs> no, but we know someone <laughs> together. Does that make sense? Anyway. We have a mutual friend? Yeah, that's the... Um, he farted in a jar once and closed it, and then like a month later opened it, and it still smelled like fart. <laughs> Moving forward to the next story. <laughs> so this one is called Don't Tell Anyone. Mm. This is uh, coming from Redditor KKM1992. And they're telling the whole internet. Uh, right, don't tell anyone. I'm going to oh, tell everybody. <laughs> Everybody. They need to know. This is a story of my father's. It happened in 1982 when my father was stationed on a military base. Uh, one night, my father's best friend and his girlfriend left just after going, uh, just after dark, going to see Tron at a movie theater. Oh, wow. Like the original Tron, not even the Jeff Bridges remake. About an hour later, the friend and his girlfriend were back on base. Uh, the car pulled in, and my father immediately noticed that it was damaged pretty badly and covered in several different colors of paint. My father asked them what happened, why they had not gone to the movie. They brushed him off and went to bed. What? A few days later, my father got his friend to tell him what had happened. They were driving along a stretch of highway, and they noticed lights coming from over a hill just ahead, where no lights should be because there was nothing around for miles. Just at the base of that hill was a parking lot for a park. A bunch of cars were pulling into the parking lot to investigate the light, so my father's friend pulled in, too. Everyone got out of their cars and was about to start hiking to the top of the hill when a large disc with flashing lights rose above the hill's peak and emitted a loud, strange sound. Several cars got banged up in everyone's panic to get away, thus the transfer of paint. My father's friend drove back to the base just as fast as possible. A few days later, men in black suits showed up on the base oh, looking for people. Legit. We're gonna do that's the one we're gonna do too at some point is men in black. Maybe Real life encounters yeah, of with men, men in black. Men in black, yeah. Yes. That might be next week, so it'll be a good follow up for the extra Well, when they come for me, I request Will Smith. Absolutely. <laughs> and Tommy Lee Jones. Okay, yeah. Tommy both Lee. of them. Yeah, I mean, they I want, come together. Yeah, I want them both. Like, look, I'm not talking until you bring me out Will Smith and Tommy Lee. <laughs> they have you, like, tied to a chair. 
They're like, you know, <laughs> <Nope>. whatever. <laughs> Tell us whatever. And you're like, I'm not saying anything until you get the real men in black. Right. Where's Will Smith? <laughs> <laughs> I want Tommy Lee Jones. A few days later, men in black suits showed up on the base looking for people. They talked to my father's friend and then sent him on his way. My father asked him what the men wanted to see him for. And the men told the friend that he better shut up, say nothing about anything that happened if he wanted to keep his military career. Whoa, that's some that is some serious. But did you die? Threatens. No, like what the freak? So. Okay. As much as we talk, we, we've talked about Men in Black a couple of times. I need to get like I'm gonna. So when we do the Men in Black on my little board here, I'm gonna have the Men in Black theme. <gasps> so whenever we mention Men in Black, you're gonna hear those girls singing. Here come the Men in Black. Yeah. Galaxy that one. Defender. <laughs> Can we just have you on there singing it? <laughs> no, nobody wants that. <laughs> I do. So this one is from Yoga Butt. <laughs> Yoga underscore butt on Reddit. I like yoga butts. So back in the spring of 1997, a group of kids from my neighborhood were looking up at the night sky, observing the how bop. I've never heard of that. It's a, a, it's a comet. Oh, Uh, the how bop comet. After a while, we started to notice a red and white dot circling around each other, making sudden movements in every direction. Like no aircraft I have ever seen or have ever since seen. At one point, they merged into one craft and shot out three similar crafts, although we couldn't tell whether it was a craft because they might have just appeared to be balls of light. Um, all because they just appeared to be balls of light. This went on for a couple of hours. Uh, right before the lights disappeared, they accelerated at lightning-fast speed into the darkness. We all went home terrified of what we saw. The next day on the front page of our small hometown paper, it said that it received several calls. The explanation they gave was that the local airport was testing aircraft. To this day, whenever I see my friends that were there that night, we'll sometimes talk about it. None of us can be sure what we saw, but to this day, none of us have ever seen anything like it. Lies. The paper is lies. Well, the paper was reporting on it. Who said it was just the military? What did it say? Oh, no, you're right. The paper did say it was military. You're right. Paper lies. <laughs> Forget me. Or somebody lied to them or told them to cover that shit up. Sorry. Jesse. Sorry. Jesse. The Jack Daniels is getting to Jesse, me. Jesse, cover that. Let's try that again. Cover right. that. Shut up. There you go. Thank you. We keep it We keep it PG here. When are you going to get me a button? That's what I want for Christmas. My own bleep button. You just want your own dedicated bleep button over there. Yeah, I need it. You'll forget to hit it. No, I won't. Yeah, you will. I will not. It depends on how many Jack Daniels I've had. Well, we're going to keep it to like (laughs) one or two. If (laughs) one got you feeling loosey-goosey, I can't imagine what two would do. Yeah, I would be done. Be done, son. I would be sleeping on your sofa. It's a very comfortable sofa. I love sleeping on sofas. I do, too. Like, I still... Isn't that weird? Yeah. Like, I I like sleeping on sofas. Love it. Something comforting. Like, a light blanket. And- I feel... I think it's because I feel cozy knowing that, like, the back of it is there. It's, like, cuddling with me. That, that <laughs> could be. A good friend of mine one time, we were celebrating a bachelor party. <laughs> Where is this and going? And we all got really... Well, they got, I actually had to go home. I had to work the next day. But they Aww, all got really dude. intoxicated. And from what I was told, one of my good friends ended up like everybody was passed out drunk and he couldn't find a blanket. He did find a pillow. Okay. So he went into the kitchen, laid on the pillow, and took the dishwasher... Oh, my god! Pull that over him as, like, cover. Yeah. I could see that. Uh, it could work. I could yeah. see that yeah. working. It could, it could work. I'm sure it's comforting. Yeah. Um, so this one, it comes to us from Redditor 469. Mm-hmm. Um, it's called The Rural Visitor. Okay. As a kid back in the 80s, and see, this goes back. So if you go back and listen to this series of podcasts, last week we were just trying to describe black-eyed children, and I was making the case that if they're real, they're extraterrestrials. And what did we say yeah, with my true. theory about like UFO encounters yeah. and abductions and things? They, they happened more back in the day. 90s, 80s, yeah. 70s, like even back to like the 50s. And here we go. catching on. 
Uh, so as a kid back in the 80s, I was spending the night at my aunt and uncle's house, which was out in the sticks in Tennessee. I was sleeping on the couch and woke up due to a bright light coming through the kitchen window and into the living room. I was looking towards the light, which was white and slightly flickering. After about 10 minutes, I turned my head as it was now keeping me awake. Uh, after a few minutes, I turned my head back toward the light and it was, I was about to go to sleep on the love seat. I see a tall, dark figure standing between myself and the light. I was frozen and could not move or scream. It approached me, reached out, and began tapping on my forehead with what, what felt like a nail or something pointed. This went on for another mi- few minutes until I must have fallen or was put to sleep. I woke up the next morning to a quiet house. I go into the bathroom, and I have a red spot on my forehead, and the skin was slightly broken, but no blood. What? So what's the point of that, though? They might have been putting information into him, like, telepathically with their fingers. <laughs> that, well, that was the same, but if you can deliver information telepathically. Maybe, maybe, it's, maybe they were tapping into his subconscious. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like the alien was, like, tapping him and was like, mind your mother business. Stop looking at my UFO. <laughs> Stop. Do you oh. understand me, you dumb, stupid <laughs> human, you piece of <laughs> human <laughs> And he's just sitting there tapping him. And then finally was like, yeah. I don't think that's what it was. I, sh- I, I hope you learned your lesson. <laughs> Back to the craft. It could have been. He might have been trying to erase his... Well, no, because he remembered it, so that doesn't make I'm going to tap you on the forehead long enough to cause brain damage, and hopefully you will remember what you've <laughs> long, seen. Long enough to cause brain damage, but not to make you bleed. Despite what you've seen on the movies, we don't have those cool men in black flashy things, so I'm just going to have to tap you until you fall into sweet unconsciousness. Okay, well, in the Dolores Cannon books that I read, she mentioned something similar to this where people would get abducted and um, the aliens would basically do something to them to um, make them remember things. Or, like, no, they put codes in them for things that they'll need to know in the future. <laughs> so maybe that's what he was doing. Maybe that's what it was doing. Mm. Are you paying attention to me? Nope. I am paying attention to you. <laughs> you heard me. Work just popped in. Look. But no, I don't think. This, I, this I, I think now. the extraterrestrial was scolding him. Was like, let me Maybe. tell you something, young man. You can't see me, but I'm furiously poking at the desk right now. <laughs> He's like, let me tell you something right now. You don't ever stare at my spacecraft, you stupid little human. <laughs> and then eventually the kid like, just fell asleep. Yeah. But no, I, I don't know. I, well, I'll be like in all seriousness, we're cracking jokes. But like, why would it? Would an extraterrestrial or some sort of entity just sit there and tap something slightly sharp on your forehead until you pass out? Maybe they were putting an implant in there, but it's so tiny. Like that's that's one of the more bizarre stories I've heard. Like I, I don't know why. What the point of that would be? Listen, I'm sure there's a reason out we there. We are, that, but mere humans. We do not know. Did you say me or humans? <laughs> we are, but mere, mere humans. Oh, you're getting you using the you using the fancy words. We're, yeah, we're not, we're not just humans. We're, we're but mi- mere, mere humans. Exactly. We're mere humans. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But me. We're but we're but mere. Anyway. Anyways, that was interesting. I don't know if you know why an alien would tap your forehead until you passed out. Please let us know in the comments below. This next one comes to us from Watermelon Pizza Fries. That sounds like a wild evening. I want all of that in my mouth right right now. now. (laughs) Jinx. I haven't had any encounters with aliens, but my mom has. On 9-11-2001, yes, I'm serious, my mom went on a walk in the waterway, on the waterway after watching the news for hours. This was in the evening time, so the no commercial flight sanction was already in place. Uh, While on her walk, she looked up after feeling like someone or something was watching her, and she saw a triangular aircraft floating above her. At first, she thought it might have been a military craft of some sort, but then realized it was making absolutely no noise. She said it was so low to the ground that she probably could have touched it if she wanted to. Damn, that's low. But before she could reach out and touch it, the craft zipped away quickly 
and with no sound at all. Good. It probably would have burnt her. See, that right there sounds like humans coming back in time. So this was 9-11. I wonder where it was. Uh, does it, let me see, does it have a location? No, it doesn't say, but I mean, like, maybe extra, maybe us, if we are the extraterrestrials, maybe us from the future, it's a historic yeah, date that will be remembered true. for hundreds, if not thousands and thousands of years from now. You're so logical. Like, perhaps that's what it is. Like, humans, like, we came back to observe 9-11. Like, what happened? And then, <clears throat> for some reason, we got really close to the ground and saw this dude's mom <laughs> and was like, yo, peace out. Bye, don't touch me. Right. Don't touch me. <laughs> not right there. <laughs> <laughs> That's not my spot. <laughs> but I don't know. So like, all right, what uh what do you think like with extraterrestrials? Just like what are your thoughts in general on that? I think just from reading Dolores Cannon's books that they are watching over us and I think that they try to help us and I think they've tried to help us and give us technology and like powers basically like mind powers like psychic powers um and tools to use for that in the in the in the past but because we're humans we get power hungry and that's why it failed and we don't have it now but i do think that they observe us and they try to help us because i think that um they know that we're here to learn things and we are basically ruining the earth and they don't want us to ruin the earth because this is how we learn and evolve into like more spiritual whatever and um, like other dimensions you know like we're not always going to be human this is a we're just here for this little bit of time uh, for many lives if you believe that and then you go on to other dimensions and i and, and i think that they know that um we're just like freaking up the earth and we're not going to have a place to come learn if we keep doing that. So they're trying to like observe us and help us and keep us from doing that. I can dig it. Yeah. I do know that after we dropped the first atomic bomb in the forties in world war two, it was then in the fifties when like alien extraterrestrial mania just hit. And it definitely, I definitely can kind of, Go along with that and the idea that like extraterrestrials may have been observing us and not really interfering. Assuming like you you reject the theory that they helped us to evolve. Uh, maybe they were sitting back and observing and then we discovered like atomic and nuclear technology and explosives and they were like, okay, we're going to have to get tied up into this because if they keep going, they, you know, humans now possess the power to destroy the planet. But see, that's the thing. I think that they gave us that technology for a different purpose. But humans, Jesse, what what purpose do nuclear bombs have other than? I'm to saying destroy? the technology to make it. I don't know. I'm not a scientist. I don't. Unless know. they want us to destroy our own planet. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not saying to make an atomic bomb. <laughs> they they took what they gave them and turned it into a weapon. Oh, we got that from the Germans. Well, I'm, they're human too, Justin. They're right. So we exactly. got that technology from, we got that, that well, they from maybe, humans. Well, they got it from the. Some people do. Hey, some people do believe, like there are a lot of theories out there that the Nazis got their technology from extraterrestrials and like occult practices. I believe it 110% because. 110%. 110% I believe it. It gave me some moonshine. <laughs> <laughs> Some blue corn whiskey. I need it. Um, no, I do believe that. I think that the military and the government have been working with aliens for as long as, I mean, forever. But they don't want to let nobody know about it. Well, that's because the military, everything they does, they do is secret. Well, I can understand that. But um, they shouldn't use it for, like, against other humans. It was never meant to be that way, like war. I feel like once we discovered that, they were like, oh, uh, it's kind of like when your kid gets a hold of something they're not supposed to, and you're like watching your kid dance around the living room. You're like, oh, that's so cute. And then she grabs a kitchen knife, and you're like, oh, yep. sh no, sh I need to I need to jump in here. 
I feel like that's the way extraterrestrials might have been. Like they're sitting back observing us and we're we're advancing and they're like, oh, look, the humans are d- doing the thing. They're really growing up and, and learning. And oh, my God, they've learned how to create nuclear bombs. Exactly. Okay, it is time to get involved. Because that is, and that are that, that those are some theories that extraterrestrials like got in got contact with the government afterwards and was like, y'all need to ditch that. Well, and that kind of goes along with your theory about the abductions only happening back in the day and not now, because they knew that like the ordinary person was catching on, and they're like, you guys can't do that. Like they had uh, um, agreement with the aliens that they could do that, and and like test on us or whatever but then after people start catching on and telling their stories that government was like you can't do that anymore right you said that yeah okay yeah. and so i you know yeah i i, I don't know i find uh I, I definitely like i think the idea is cool but I, I think you know some people think they only showed up after the atomic bombs i think they've always been there i mean you look at like which ancient aliens that show i do love that show but i definitely think they tie everything to they're like how did they know to use this type of fabric to create this type of shirt that would reject the rain? Extraterrestrial human being. <laughs> and it's like, I think they tie, I mean, I love that show, but I think they tie everything to extraterrestrials. Yeah. It's like, they were using, they were using doggy style sexual positions back in the day. How did they know? How did they know to do that? Extraterrestrial <laughs> beings. How did they know that was an option? <laughs> and he doesn't talk with that much of a lisp. The guy with the hair, <laughs> the, the, whatever. So sorry for giving him the crazy list. But, you know, it's like they, they tie everything to aliens, you know. I but just it, realized something crazy. What? Dude, do you listen to um Supernatural by, with Ashley Flowers, the podcast? No. She literally, in the you brought up Ancient Aliens, the show. She was talking about aliens on her podcast today, and she brought that show up, too, and it just, like... Yeah. What are the odds? A lot of That's callbacks. crazy. But, yeah, no, I mean, like, but, 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 but there are things in the past that definitely seem like there was some extraterrestrial definitely. interference there. I mean, I really think that they helped. They, I think they gave them the um, technology or, like, the psychic abilities to be able to build the pyramids and those, um, the Easter Islands, head, the head thing, the heads, they look like heads. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. Oh, what are yeah. they called? The Easter Island something. But anyways, yeah, so I think that they um, they helped them build that. Oh, well, it's a lot like the pyramids. That's some people, some people think you know. I just said that if you weren't looking at your phone, you would have heard me. I was, I was. I'm you sorry. Didn't hear me. Look, we just made a big sale. I just, you know, oh, we, congratulations! That's literally what my boss just texted. Do you me have like a party? Woo, sound like a psh, um, confetti and let's balloons. See, do I have a? Um, I don't. Justin is always working. We can't fault him for that. True that the grind never stops, but. Um, and, and with, with the, you know, there have been some pretty interesting, like logical reason, like ways they could have built the pyramids, you know, using like, like without aliens. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. But it is, I mean, there, there are it's just some things that's it's just hard to even, even scientists can come up with theories, but there's no, you don't know. Well, it's like those crystal skulls. Yeah. There's no way to carve Every, that. Everybody like, thought those <laughs> crystal scroll, skulls, skulls were going to end the, the planet in 2012. <laughs> I know, I remember that. Well, didn't they never find, they never found one of them, right? Maybe the planet would have ended if they found the one. Maybe. But no, I, I definitely like the, I think the idea is, is really cool. Like we're, we're like an ant farm to the aliens. Yeah. You know, like, like we are just down here doing our thing, living life. And then they're just <laughs> observing. And I think it is so funny. I think about this all the time that there are people on this planet that think they're so smart. They figured out all this stuff, but like compared to other <laughs> generations like other like um what am i thinking i don't know let's say aliens compared to the aliens no we're so stupid we're so stupid compared to the aliens i mean like we have so far to go my mama says i'm smart thank you very much you know compared to the she's the fourth smartest lady i know well who's the first the second and the third you'd know if you were smarter Jesse, <laughs> I have a bleep button for a reason. I don't have one. I can't. I don't have stretch Armstrong arms over here. Well, 
but no, I, you know, I definitely, you know, and that's, that's what I love about extraterrestrials. Not only is it, it's a very good possibility they're out there, but there's so many different theories that make sense. It could be that they've interfered with us from the beginning of time, or they didn't start, they didn't get involved until we started using atomic weapons. You know I mean? Like, I just love that so many different, it's, and they all make sense in their own way. Well, there's one theory that I've read that they actually populated Earth and they would bring different specimens from different planets and just drop it here and see if it worked. Oh, I and like that's, that. And that's I, another yeah. reason why they observe us, to, just to see their own creations. I mean, like I said, and then there's, all right, so humans are naturally attracted to, like, shiny things. It are happens. we? I like, am. We're like raccoons? Racco- you know what? Glitter is like one of my favorite things. Raccoons are not humans. Yeah, but they're attracted to shiny things. <laughs> they are. But no, like you notice, all right, so <laughs> it could be a fake diamond or like one of those kids like hologram things, but yeah. when you move it in the light. Yep. But it, it attracts us. It it's does. just something in you that you can't really describe and you just, you can't help but look at it. Like you j- so one thought was that extraterrestrials, uh, came to the planet and they they used t- technology and their DNA to advance our ancestors' evolution, and we were like a slave race to them. Like yeah. we humans were like and, and like we were we were mining gold and and all these shiny minerals that they needed, and eventually we rebelled and they they really could have wiped us out but they decided you know what let's just roll out and let them do their own thing <laughs> and that's why we have this instinctual attraction to shiny things huh. um now i'm not saying i believe that but it's an interesting theory yeah there's plenty of theories out there that's not one of my favorite ones cuz i like to believe that the aliens wouldn't well, us. i mean that well that doesn't mean every alien is good or bad i mean you know some, what? that's some. true because I guess reptilians would be aliens, and and clearly they're not oh, all good. Reptilians aren't real. You don't know that. I mean, they, they definitely could be a reptilian race of extraterrestrials, but the, the David Ike reptilians here on Earth, I don't think they exist. All right, Justin, then how do you explain all those videos where the people in the news and the government and all that have slit eyes for a second? CGI. You really think people will put that much effort? Hell yeah, for some clout? Hell yeah. You can put a you you, you can you can modify a video, put it on YouTube, and get millions of views or like now on TikTok, which is so cool that you have a video with like millions of views. Thank you. Um <laughs> but like you can get some serious clout for that. You yeah, gain all kinds of followers and it can lead to to the you know, I mean I do believe that there that that um the government is not all human. Well, maybe they are. Well, that's why they're assholes. JP and I uh, once, I think we did a podcast on it and showed the clip. There is this really interesting video, and it could be fake, but uh, it is very, very, and it's grainy and it's old, and it doesn't, it just looks like it was before. It, I don't know. It doesn't really scream CGI, but it's like, and I think it's in Russia, but it's like all these top government officials like of having this, it's in Russia. this soiree <laughs> or something, and the light blinks off. What? And there are eyes glowing in the dark. Ah! And not in a like mystical way, but I more, like, more like a, a deer or a fox, the way their eyes glow when you shine a spotlight on them. Like, it, it was like reflective. Yeah. I had a know? dream like that the other night, kind of. I was like driving down this road i didn't know where i was it was in the middle of nowhere i was driving down this road and i realized i was driving towards a dead end so i was gonna turn around there but like at the end of the dead end there's a house right and but it was dark outside and there's no lights and i could tell there was like mounds of sheets or mounds of blankets something in the yard like a whole bunch of them and i'm driving by and i'm like why are all these piles of sheets in their yard but you could see from like the nose up on top of each sheet, it was a face, and their eyes were glowing. That's pretty creepy. And then it gets creepier, because after I saw them, I'm like, nah. And then uh, and then I saw all these baby cribs with babies in them, and they were bundled up in blankets, like, in the same yard. It was so creepy. Yeah, that's a, man, that, ooh. That was the end part. Like that was what actually like that the dream. that was the middle part. Let me tell you, 
I was in the midst of this dream was so crazy. That was just one little part of it. And guess who texted me and woke me up? Who? JP. Really? Yes. And I was like, thank God he texted me because I was not having that dream. It was too crazy. It was too wild for me. What time was it? It was pretty late. I had gone back to sleep after the kids got on the bus. It was like 1030. I cannot think of the last time I slept at 1030. That must be nice. It is. I'm enjoying it. So moving forward, we got time for another story or two. I cannot believe this podcast has been going for an hour. Where is it? Missing time. Oh. We got abducted. There's like a big blank <laughs> spot. But no, this one's called orbiting near an earthquake. And see that this all right, not to I know we've diverged a lot tonight. Normally we do better at staying on the stories, but I we just both <laughs> really like extraterrestrials, so it's hard not to yeah. to go off subject. But um, you know, another thing is like they always appear near like natural disasters or big, you know, like the tsunami in Japan. Yeah. Like there are plenty of videos of like extraterrestrial or like UFO, like weird activity around that. And it's almost like it's being observed. It's like, again, us from the future going back in time yeah. to observe these big moments in history to see how they actually played out. You know, maybe a thousand or two years in the future, like we've got the history books right you know what I'm saying? Like we we've got the, we've rewritten the history books because we actually got to go back and observe history. Uh, you mean like in the future? Yeah, yeah, because they're definitely not right. Now. Well, not a thousand or two, like thousands, if not millions of years <laughs> in the future. All right, so this one's called "Orbiting Near an Earthquake," 2010, Los Angeles. I was cleaning up around my apartment when I noticed my kitchen lamp swinging and my building rocking. Obviously, it was an earthquake. It lasted for a a bit. And I called my friend to make sure she was okay. As we were chatting, I was standing out on my balcony, which overlooks um, Runyon Canyon, a popular hiking trail. I suddenly noticed this object hovering high in between the mountains. It was way too high to be a helicopter and too small and low to be a plane. I thought she just said it was way too high. Small and... Okay. Um, (laughs) Which made it super strange was its shape and lack of movement. It was orb-esque and stood stagnant for about a solid three minutes before moving at a snail's pace to the west. I'm talking slower than any aircraft, blimp, kite, whatever that I've ever seen. It also seemed to reflect off the sun, but only at some angles. After moving towards the left and then once again staying completely still, it immediately darted at what seemed like an impossible speed in the opposite direction upwards and disappeared. That's from XC Drummer Chick on Reddit. I've seen something similar to that before. Well, your TikTok that's went like super viral. That uh, that that was like a portal. Y'all were at the it, beach, right? It looked like a portal, yeah. What beach were you at? We were at Atlantic Beach. And it happened over the ocean, but there's houses blocking the ocean, so you can't see it. But um, it also happened during, like, a storm. It wasn't raining, but it was lightning. So I really think they were using the storm, or maybe they created the storm so they could use the portal and nobody would notice. But I happened to get it on video. It is is wild, because lightning doesn't go straight. Nope. And, I mean, this was like, it was wild. If you haven't, what's what's your TikTok name? I have no freaking clue. Just, you, sh- you should know this. I know. Just give me a second. And I'll Do you still TikTok to... regularly? No. I look at it mostly. It's just, um, it's Jesse King with four S's. So J-E-S-S-S-S-I-K-I-N-G. That's you, me. You said three S's? Four. Four S's. Okay. So J-E-S-S-I. J-E-S-S-S-S-I. There you go. King. So elegant. Anywho. All right. So this is the last one, and you'll like this because it talks about extraterrestrials helping people. <gasps> yes. The title of this one is Something Helped Us in the Swamp, and it's by Skittish Gibbon. I like that. That's a cool name. I was 12 at the time, and my family has a camp uh, on the... Yep. Some river I can't <laughs> pronounce in Louisiana, but hey, I was born in Louisiana, so. You were? 
Jesse, you know this. I didn't know that. You did, I've known you for like fifth. I've got. I've known you for. When would I have ever asked you? I've known you for like twenty years, and you did not know I was born in Louisiana. No, were you born? Lived in Louisiana from a, a lot of my like young childhood, and then moved here. My dad was in the army, and that's where he was stationed. What? In I Lu- did not know that. I was born in Fulk. Fort Polk, Louisiana. Uh, Fort? Fort, Fort Polk, Louisiana. Do you Leesville. have family there or no? It was just no, your dad my dad was, was okay. stationed there. All my family's from here. That is so cool. You didn't know that? I didn't. What's funny is if I go to buy a firearm and I I fill out, um, you know, the background check, uh, if I put that I'm from Leesville, Louisiana, it comes back way quicker. If I put that I was born in, because sometimes I just get, I don't know why. Sometimes I'll write, you know, like uh, where you were born, Fort Polk, Louisiana. Yeah. It takes, like, I have to come back the next day to get the gun because it takes forever for Is the background check to come it's back. Like a base? I think they see Fort Polk and they like look into, like, who is this? Is this, you know. But if I put Leesville, yeah. which is where it's located, Louis- Leesville, Louisiana, it comes right back. Huh. But yeah. Uh, but, anyways. It was some place that I can't pronounce in Louisiana. The only way you can get to it is by boat. So it was just my uncle, my cousin, and myself, and we were headed back to the boat launch on a Sunday night. Now, the boat we were in didn't have any working lights. So to see where we were going, my uncle would constantly shoot a flare. That sounds excessive. Like, you could you could just get a spotlight. Right. I've been on boats that didn't have any lights, and somebody would just hold the spotlight and... That's also really creepy. That always really freaks me out, being on water at night. I hate it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'll tell you a short little story that does not relate to extraterrestrials, (laughs) but I heard it on the internet, and it kind of freaked me out. But anyways, we'll get back to that. Um, So anyways, uh, the uncle would shoot a flare to light the way. We quickly ran out of flares. I bet. Um, (laughs) Let's see. uh, You shoot... uh, we quickly ran out of the flares you shoot as it was around two, a two-hour boat ride back to the landing. Jeez. A two-hour boat ride. Good At God. Night? Uh, so I ended up in front of the boat holding a regular flare as we were now on a much narrower stretch of river. Does nobody have a freaking flashlight? I mean, You're going out on the water at nighttime, people. Be prepared. It's all about being prepared. Well, maybe the batteries died. To our left in the swamp, two large glowing balls appeared. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I knew as soon as it said two large balls appeared. I was like, oh, there goes (laughs) Jesse. And they were glowing. Focused on the balls. (laughs) So then there was another one to the right. Uh, I was just trying to keep the flare from burning me. uh, And my little cousin was freaking out. After around 10 minutes of them navigating through the swamp, they formed a triangle above us on the river. It's hard to gauge how far up they were, but it was a, it was very visible. They continued to follow us for the rest of the journey back to the landing, and as soon as we arrived, they disappeared. This all happened around 18 years ago, but it is something I will never forget. I don't talk about this stuff, really, and usually just keep it to myself. So it's like the extraterrestrials were helping them find their way back. Yeah. In the dark. That's so cool. They're out here doing the little jobs, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're doing their little jobs. Sweet. Maybe boat. the people on the boat had, like, a crazy life mission. And, like, the extraterrestrials can see all all the different um, realities, like, things that could happen. And if they died, which was one of the realities that they couldn't carry out their life mission, and they're like, "Let's help this this pe- these people out." That is really specific. Is that is that a deep thought, or is that Jack Daniels? <laughs> no, that wore off. I'm drinking coffee now. No, I mean maybe that's what it was. <laughs> because I mean, why would they? It's such a small little like. I, I feel like. Going back to what we were talking about earlier, the extraterrestrials that are here to help us. We're like, oh, look, these little dumb humans, they're lost. Let's just uh, lead them back to the shore. (laughs) Look, they forgot their flashlight. Little do they know they can power the flashlight with their mind, but they don't know that yet because they're stupid humans. Well, it's like, just get a spotlight with some batteries. 
there problem you go. solved. Because again, I, I've been on a lot of fishing boats yeah. plenty of times. I mean, we have one of the, the biggest, I think it's the biggest man-made lake on the East Coast. <laughs> I thought you were going to say is, spotlight. <laughs> the the biggest, biggest man-made spotlight. I almost bought the brightest flashlight available <laughs> the other day like i saw a thing what? about it and i was like i'm buying it why so do I, you need that i do because like i have never in my life seen light this bright like oh, it legit just because well, and as much as i camp too like sometimes, oh, that's true. Yeah. sometimes where we camp we're not around people so like I you forget have a, that you have free time to do stuff like that yeah well i, I really don't i somehow fit it in yeah. but, well that's uh, good though good for time. you self-care yeah. But it's like, I was going to buy it. And then it, I, it was like $1,000. And I was like, mm, yeah, I mean. Jeez, did it come with a. I could have a million dollars in the oh bank. And God. I don't know that I want to spend $1,000 no. on a flashlight. I mean, I got some pretty, pretty bright flashlights as it is. So I was like. Mm, You're cool. just paying all that money for extra bright light. Like, come on, it's light. Right. It's just light. Yeah. So I was like, mm, I'm what good it? on that. Okay. But with that said, I've been on a lot of fishing boats where you don't have it's no light attached to the boat so one person's job is to shine them i mean you, your dad has a boat so i'm you've sure you've done this headlights <laughs> no i have but oh they do you know like at <laughs> night if you're on the if you're on the water at night you really have to like watch for logs that are, are like jutting like sticks right. jutting up out the water right. and things that could like sink you so you know it's really not that uncommon but who knows this was a while back so maybe it was before people used Spotlight. I don't. I don't. I don't know why they didn't have a spotlight on the. Maybe boat. they were on a canoe as well. But, um, but we have one. We have the biggest man-made lake on the East Coast, twenty minutes away from us, and we go to it a lot. So I mean, it's like I've spent a lot of time on that lake and um, at night with a spotlight. So the lesson here is not about extraterrestrials. It's about the importance <laughs> of being prepared. What were you going to tell me? You interrupted the story, and you were like, "This doesn't pertain to extraterrestrials," but. I'll tell you in a minute. <laughs> it wasn't. You said you don't remember saying that. Why don't you go back and listen to it? And missing time. We just got abducted by extraterrestrials. Your memory. We just got abducted. <laughs> no, just you, because I remember that conversation happening. Well, no, I just it was basically just talking about like the lake. Yeah, like that's oh. super common. Like you go on okay, the lake, because okay. I mean, some like your dad. Well, you know, your dad has a boat, so I'm yeah. sure you've you know you've been gone. Y'all ever go out at night? Yeah. And I mean, you gotta like somebody usually has a light, kind of just watching in front of the boat to make yep. sure you don't run up on like a a, a big Dude, log that's stuck up. That makes me nervous during the day. We so. got a our old friend James, who's Barney? never yeah he's never been on the podcast. He would drive him and him and another mutual friend, Cameron, used to, to have a boat and they would um, <clears throat> we'd go out and he would take it. And, and like the wake would be bad because, again, it's the biggest man made lake on the East Coast. So, I mean, it is constantly people out there. It's yeah. a tourist trap. And I mean, like he would be rolling and into the bottom of the boat, which would be going bap, bap, smacking on the wake. And I'm like, James, you need to slow the <laughs> down. Yeah. And he's like, oh, these boats were made to go through. I was like, they made to go through what? But I just, oh, anyways. My dad, really my dad, when we go out on the lake, he <clears throat> he probably doesn't even go that fast. But to me, it is. And it just, it I, the whole time I'm sitting there praying, like, <laughs> just let me live. Dear Lord Jesus, send some extraterrestrials to save us. <laughs> to light our way. <laughs> But let us know what you think about extraterrestrials in the comments below. Do you believe in them? Why do you think they're here? What do you think their role in our development has been? I find extraterrestrials to be fascinating. I mean, it's kind Me of an too. overdone subject like ghost. But at the same time, I just, of all the supernatural things out there, the extraterrestrials are like the one I, I would put the right. most stock into. They're the most believable. Some people think they're demons. Like, there's theories that extraterrestrials aren't real. They're demons. What? No, come that, on. That goes into, like, Bible stuff. Yeah, but the Bible somewhere mentions something. Demons being aliens? Something like that, yeah. That they like to fly around, you know, and just, like, observe and help, sometimes help us out. Yeah, they're really Unidentified demons. Fly, uh, unidentified flying Unidentified. 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 <laughs> Anyways, it's late. I'm tired. I'm going to go to bed here soon after I eat some din din. Oh, oh. oh, that good. sounds good. I'm thinking chicken nuggets because you were talking about McDonald's chicken, earlier. Chicken, chicken nuggets. You ever heard that song? How did, what is it? The chicken nuggets song. Uh, sing it. I don't know. 
You've never. All right. So we're going to go out. I know that there <laughs> there are people that are hardcore to the paranormal that clicked on this podcast and are like, why in the f*** am I listening to this? They like it. And now they want to hear you sing it too. If they made it this far, they didn't hate it that bad. That's true. Yeah. But all right. We're going to go out. We're going to go out. I'm going to play you out on a song. Oh, gonna, the chicken nugget song. Yep. So, yep, we will be back next week with another subject, and we thank you so much for listening. Please remember to subscribe, whether you're listening on YouTube or you're listening on SoundCloud or Spotify or iTunes or any of the many outlets that we're available on. Also, check out our Patreon, patreon.com slash thepodcastingdad. Even doing a dollar a month gets you extra content, and it helps us to afford this increasingly expensive equipment that allows us to sound halfway decent. Totally worth it. Absolutely. So, in the meantime, I'm Justin. I'm Jesse. And we are the Podcasting Dead. Okay. Chicken Nuggets, this is your favorite song. If you like Chicken Nuggets, then you gotta sing along. If you like Chicken Nuggets, this is your favorite song. Chicken, chicken nugget, yeah. Chicken, chicken nugget, yeah. Can I just say that we started this podcast <laughs> about extraterrestrials and we went out on the Chicken nugget song. I like that song. I'm gonna have to let my kids hear that. <laughs> Oh, my God. ADD at an all-time high. But, uh, yeah, we'll see you soon. Thank you so much for listening. We will catch you next week.